As I was tying off this downline, my buddies have gotten ahead of me and found something that was pretty mind-boggling. There's also something incredibly dangerous nearby, and if you plan on diving here, you're going to want to know what that is. This is in Canyon Lake at Comal Park, and as you can see, we found yet another truck. Like the last one that we found, this one's also red, except it's a little bit older, and we're going to be taking a look at this towards the end of the video. If you saw my last video that I posted across the way at Overlook Park, you'll see that I think this spot is pretty amazing to dive into, and there's a few things here that I want to show you. One of which is quite terrifying, and if you don't know where you're going, you're going to end up running straight into this thing. So let's take a look at all of this at Comal Park in Canyon Lake, Texas. This park lies on the south shore of Canyon Lake. It consists of a large peninsula that has two very different sides to it. On the eastern shore is an often crowded and very pleasant swimming beach. Off the end of the peninsula is a small island that's a popular place for boaters to congregate, drop anchor, and even go for a swim. This is known as Huck Dimples Island. Looking top down on the western side of the peninsula, you can see a nearly perfect semicircle. This was carved out by the Guadalupe River before the lake was a reservoir. On this side, under the surface, you'll find a well-formed wall formation that's laden with massive overhangs and cave-like grottoes. This wall runs for a few thousand feet and even extends all the way out to Heldenfels Island. And that's why we're here. When we get in the water, Jay runs us through a quick gear check. This is to ensure that everything's configured in the right way before we begin the dive. As soon as we descend, he runs us through what's called a modified estril, and then a bubble check, and signals to me to lead the way. The viz on the surface is pretty poor, but as soon as we get underneath the overhang, Although it becomes much darker, the visibility becomes much better. On the bottom of the wall, you'll see that it's a complete tangled up mess of fishing line, trash, and even outdoor canopies that are used to protect beachgoers from the sun. These outdoor canopies, along with all of this trash, is brought to the beach up above by visitors every weekend, and all it takes is for a windy day to bring everything right down to the bottom of the wall where we are right now. Aside from all the trash that's down here, it's hard not to be fascinated by all the overhangs, grottos, and holes that exist all along this wall and even all the creatures that live inside of them. We decided to venture slightly off the wall, but as soon as we did so, the visibility began to get really poor. However, I started to make something off out in the distance. It turns out that it's another one of those outdoor canopies. I check in with the team, and we choose to push forward. However, now I'm starting to see something else. As I get closer, it's starting to take the shape of some sort of boat. Based on the slot that's right here in the middle where the dagger board goes, I can tell that this is part of a tiny sailboat that's known as a sunfish. And it also seems like we're only looking at the deck. Somehow this boat got separated from the hull, so maybe we need to come back on a different day and see if we can locate the rest of the sailboat.
After exploring around on this tiny wreck, we get the group back together and decide to turn back around. Except this time on our way back, we're going to ascend to a depth of 40 feet. And just like at Overlook Park at this depth, the geology is much more interesting and the overhangs are a little bit more intense. And of course, as with any diving canyon lake, there's never a shortage of entanglement hazards. And as it turns out, these types of hazards aren't the only thing that we should be worried about. Up on top of this ridge line, there's a building that I've always noticed, but I've never paid too much attention to. As it turns out, this is a water treatment plant for the local community, which is gonna mean that there's an intake pipe running straight to the bottom, down the hillside, and into the lake taking in a lot of water. And we are heading straight for it. I didn't quite know what I was looking at at first, but as soon as I saw this shadow, I was overcome by a pretty eerie feeling. When I realized that we're swimming directly into an intake pipe, I was able to stop the group and turn the dive. That pipe was absolutely big enough for us to fit into, and if we got close enough to it while it was running, who knows what would have happened. But I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that this experience made my wetsuit a little bit wetter. The next weekend that we made it out here, we're planning on participating in a surveying project that's hosted by a local diver, shout out to Mike Galt. In this project, Mike is organizing teams on their own free will to survey local dive sites. That way there could be a centralized collection of all this useful data about these amazing places that we have to dive here in our own backyard in Texas. What we're doing on this particular dive was setting up a downline to be used as a starting point for the surveying project. And as we were descending, my buddies went down ahead of me, and when I made it to the bottom to meet them, what I found them looking at was actually quite surprising. Looks like what they found was some sort of old truck from the late 80s or maybe even the early 90s and I wasn't able to see a make or a model but if you know what kind of truck this is let me know in the comments. If this truck were put here as a part of some sort of dive part, the glass windshield and other harmful components would have been removed and besides this area is not go very often so that wouldn't make a whole lot of sense either. Looking a little bit closer you can see that the right door has been left open and the hood is unlatched as well. Also, the windshield around where the VIN number is is broken, so maybe somebody came across this before us, or it's just broken in that one spot out of pure coincidence. Either way, it definitely rolled into the lake from this beach up above, maybe as a part of some sort of crime that was committed, or just an accident caused by something as simple as not engaging the parking brake. So that's Comal Park, and I hope you enjoyed this really quick look of what I feel like is another great place to dive and explore here in Canyon Lake, Texas. If you haven't already, please subscribe. It helps me out so much. And of course, I can't wait to see you on the next dive. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in seeing a video where I found a truck that actually did turn out to be stolen, feel free to watch this video that I'm tagging right here where I found a stolen Dodge Ram at Canyon Lake Boat Ramp number one.